Hello everybody, it's Monica Heltz, your Fisher's Public Health Director for the um, Tuesday weekly metric review on our community risk rating scale. Today is December the 15th. We continue to be in red or severe risk category for community transmission. It just continues to climb um, on most of our metrics um, as far as the number of cases that we're getting and our case incidence rate. Our community transmission is our primary metrics that we look at and we look at those by determining our percent positivity rates um, and our case incidence rate. Our percent positivity rate this week is 21.1% for counties, uh, for the Hamilton County's individuals tested rate. That is actually um, an improvement over last week. Um, so that is um, some slight good news. Uh, our uh, Fisher's Health Department percent positivity, however, continues to climb. That one currently is at 16.32%, um, which is in the red category as well. And that um, has gone dramatically up over the last um, week or so. Our case incidence rate is the other primary metric that we look at. Um, that right now on the 14-day rolling average is 97.09. We've been hovering around 100 for a couple of weeks now. Um, our cases do continue to go up. We had a 23% increase in cases over the past week. Um, we did see a dip um, in, in testing and positive reports after Thanksgiving, um, but those seem to be going up again, and we are certainly having um, pretty much every day going over 100 today, so I would expect that number to go up a little bit. Um, so community transmission metrics all in red um, as they have been. The secondary metric that we look at is our public health capacity. Um, and so the first metric is our testing availability. That remains at under two days um, for getting an appointment. So you should be able to easily find an appointment the same day or the next day um, at this particular moment. So we're going to put that category in green. Our testing turnaround time is uh, typically ranging between one and five days. Um, many times we're getting um, those results back in as little as one day, but um, it does sometimes take as long as five days. There are a few outliers um, beyond that, but for the most part, people are getting their results around three days. So I'm going to put that in our yellow category. Our tracing is... Um, remains uh, pretty strong from the Fisher's Health Department standpoint. We have a large team working very hard uh, to get you guys notified as soon as you test positive. If you test positive at our testing site and get you um, your contact tracing done, um, that is happening in less than 24 hours. So that remains in green. The state does seem to have seen some improvements in their process since they shortened the process. Um, so I'm going to move that down to orange this week, um, but it's still um, there is uh, still much work to be done in order to get contact tracing happening at the level it needs to happen. Um, as far as our healthcare systems, that's our tertiary metric. Um, our ICU capacity has increased a little bit this week. We're at 23% capacity um, for I. ICU beds, which is a good thing. We do know that COVID is more um, affecting our progressive care units at this time than our ICUs, so that's also a good thing. Um, so, But the ICU capacity is something that's pretty easy to look at. Um, that, again, is at 23%, which is an improvement over last week. The bed capacity, the hospitals remain um, pretty stretched um, and, uh, and very full of COVID cases. Um, I'm going to put that metric continuing to be orange um, just because they are quite close to full um, in many places uh, for District 5, which is the district that we look at. Um, but as far as new hospitalizations, um, that rate has decreased. We seem to have, uh, the hospitals seem to be managing things okay. Um, we haven't seen that rapid increase, at least at this particular moment. Um, so for right now, that metric is looking a little bit better. Um, as far as other data I can share with you, we have seen 100, uh, 1,037 cases in the past two weeks. So this is a pretty high rate. This is um, a fifth of all of our cases um, that we have so far. We, uh, we have a total of 5,884 cases. We have lost 47 Fishers residents confirmed to COVID and additional numbers of residents that have not either yet been confirmed or were not able to be confirmed due to a lack of testing early in the outbreak. Uh, we have also lost 6,657 of our fellow Hoosiers today. So we continue to count on all of you to help us over this last bump until we can get the community widely vaccinated. Um, if you have a story about, about uh, COVID and how it's affected your life, we would be um, and would be interested in sharing your story. Please send us an email at healthdepartment at fishers.in.us. Um, again, that's health, D-E-P-T, actually H-E-A-L-T-H-D-E-P-T at fishers.in.us um, if you would like, if you would be interested in sharing your story. In the hopeful news front, um, 
you know, I, we are all ready for vaccines. This is what we're doing this uh, this season to spread joy to our neighbors um, is to is to be ready for the vaccine. Um, we are finalizing those plans and do expect to receive vaccine for the health department. Um, to share with our residents in some fashion, hopefully early in January. Um, there will be criteria initially. We They're still finalizing those plans from the State Department of Health, but we will absolutely keep you guys updated um, as, as we know the plans for sharing the vaccine with our community. So uh, I'm going to hang on to that hopeful news. I hope you guys are uh, spreading joy all over the place in this season. We need a little bit of that, a little bit more of that this year than, than even every other year. Um, and I wish you all the best health and, uh, and, and joy and peace this, this holiday season. Thank you so much. Good night.